Do you long for an aerodynamic triathlon specific bike to go alongside your regular road bike? Having both is a luxury that many of us can't afford, but on the plus side, there's still so much that you can do to your regular road bike that will give you similar benefits you'd experience with a triathlon specific bike. So today, thanks to our partners at Profile Design, we're gonna be delving in to those aerodynamic alterations that you can easily make to your road bike that will help you go faster in your next triathlon. <laughs> Adding clip-on aero bars is probably the most obvious alteration to make, as well as the most effective, as our bodies make up the majority of resistance when it comes to aerodynamics on the bike. So if you play around with your position and reduce that frontal area, you'll easily save some watts. There are a variety of aero bars out there, but before you start, just check that your bike has handlebars that are suitable for them. It's not recommended to use carbon handlebars to attach metal aero bars with, but even if it is metal on metal, you still want to protect this part of your bike. So for that, you can just use a little bit of electrical tape, wrap it around before clamping on your aero bars. Now I've opted for these carbon aero bars with a slight S bend, but you'll notice it's quite a small rise, so it actually gives you quite an aggressive stretched out position. But there's a huge variety out there, you just need to find the right one that's effective for you. Now these actually come as individual poles, which I personally prefer, as it gives you the scope to find that perfect fit. And just check the ability to move the reach and the length of your poles. And these have the added bonus that you can alter the angle of the armrest, which will help you get into that even more secure and comfortable aero position. Now obviously it depends how wide apart you want to have your aero bars, but you might need to remove a little bit of handlebar tape just to give yourself enough space. Once you've done that, then just put the electrical tape on and then lightly tighten your bars so that you can actually still move them. This will make finding the correct position that much easier because once you've got to this stage, take your bike and set it up on your indoor trainer, preferably in front of a mirror or get someone to film it. Or even better, if you can, find a coach and then you can just easily adjust your position until you found the perfect fit. It's worth noting that as you move yourself forward into the aero position at the front, you'll also want to move your saddle forward slightly to compensate. And in order to maintain the same angle at your hips, your knees and your ankles, you might want to raise it slightly so that you can maintain your power in that new position. Now the final point on your position is to look at your handlebar height, as most aero bars will attach above your handlebars, so it'll actually bring the height up at the front, which can end up being counterproductive for aerodynamics. Because generally, the lower the handlebars and the lower you are at the front, the more aerodynamic you're going to be, but you're only going to improve your speed if you're comfortable and can still maintain power in that position. So if you do want to, you might have a couple of spaces which you can take out, drop the stem down, and then place them on top, which will lower your handlebars and also lower your aero bars with it. So bringing your arms and hands in towards each other on the aero bars will help with the air to flow more smoothly over your hands and also over your body. But don't forget, it is a compromise between being aerodynamic, but also being in a position where you're still able to produce the power. Now you should be happy with your position on the aero bars, so just check that they're firmly secure. And it's time to look at hydration. We're gonna start at the front, and there's several options out there. You could use a bottle, something like this, that fits in between the bars just there, or you could go for an option that sits more on top of the bars, also trying to maintain aerodynamics. Both of which have a straw so you can drink without really having to move your head. And they also have an opening on top so when you do need to refill, you can just do that once and get back into that aero position. It is worth just pointing out though that the act of putting an aero bottle on your bike is not automatically going to make you go faster because there will be resistance. The idea is it allows you to maintain that aero position and that's where the benefits are. The humble top tube bag is often sniffed at by cyclists, but for longer distance races, it's the perfect solution. Having an area where you can keep your fuel that's easily accessible and still being aerodynamic just makes sense. Obviously, the bag in itself isn't going to make you go faster, but being able to get to your fuel easily with a minimal amount of effort means you'll stay fueled, so you will be able to go faster and for longer. Having said that though, if you're only going to use one gel or one bar and you're doing a short distance race, it's probably worth leaving the bag off and popping something in your pocket or taping your gel onto your top tube. There's a great selection out there of bento boxes or top tube bags. Some bikes will even come with something ready built in. You can opt for a more of a rubber version that's constantly open that you just pull your gels out through. I've gone for the Profile Design bag. It's really lightweight and as you can see, it's easy to attach with Velcro. And the zip opens towards you for ease of access when you're in that aero position. And it's great for being able to keep gels or even just bits of broken up food that you want to snack at as you ride along. 
It depends how hot and dehydrating the conditions are and as to how many drink stations are going to be in your race. As to how many water bottles or drinks bottles you want to carry on your bike. Now obviously there's the traditional spots, you can have one on your seat tube and your down tube, but these aren't the most aerodynamic positions. That said, they are easy to access, meaning you can get back into your own TT aero position pretty quickly. So if you do want to opt for a bottle here, I'd recommend using an aero bottle and having it on your down tube. Carrying your bottles behind the saddle is proven to be more aerodynamic than on the down tube or the seat tube. You can either opt for a single or a double bottle cage like I have this time. Now obviously when you reach to take the bottle, it will disrupt your aerodynamics whether you've got to sit up and reach behind. But the ideal scenario is if you just use it once during the race, take it out, you refill your bottle at the front and then place it back. And therefore, you'll still be getting great aerodynamic benefits. The benefit of a double cage, if you only need to carry one bottle of water, you can use your spare one to keep your spares, your inner tubes, your tyre levers and your gas canister either inside an old bottle or you can even tape it to your bottle cage. These are just a few simple changes that all add up and together they can end up making a significant difference to your aerodynamics. So play around with your setup, find out what works for you and remember there's no point in being completely aerodynamic if you can actually only hold that position for a few minutes. If you haven't yet done so, just click on the globe, you can subscribe to GTN. And we've done an investigation looking at the difference of riding on your aero bars to your drops. And that video is just here. And if you want a comparison between a time trial bike and a road bike, then there's a great video on that just here.